What's up you guys, it's Laura Wells. I am so excited to do this video. Um, I'm coming at you live. I'd love to know if you are watching the replay. Um, here in the first few seconds, I always like to say hi to replay viewers because it takes a few seconds for people to get on live. So hello, hello to those of you who catch me on replay. Um, if you are watching this video, just comment below if you are new to my videos, if you've never seen my videos before. I kind of always love to just find out who is like sharing, who's new to watching my videos. Um, and if you're watching live, just type live below if you catch me on replay, just let me know that too. I always like to give a shout out. And if you happen to share this video, type that below so that I can give you a special shout out. Hey Peggy, how are you? Okay, so this video is gonna be super good. I'm gonna try and keep it quick because I'd love this to be something that you can share with your teams and share to any of your pages where you think that you know, people who follow you, if they are in business, if they're an entrepreneur, if they're in network marketing, they're probably going to love this video um, and the message behind it. I've learned a lot in my in my years. Um, I have been in network marketing for about uh, almost 20 years between network marketing and direct sales. But I've also been in traditional business. I've been um, a president of a very large global organization that had 250 markets in seven countries. I was the president of that organization and I oversaw um, women in business, women entrepreneurs. I oversaw all the operations of the company and so forth. And I've learned a lot as far as like what to do, what not to do, some really great pieces of advice, business advice, that I just kind of wanted to pass along to you guys. Some of these things um, surely apply to like network marketing, of course, but some of this stuff will apply to you if you have a traditional business. You know, I have a lot of people on my Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube where they're estheticians, they own their own salons, they run Etsy shops, um, they do social media, uh, digital marketing, they run agencies, things like that. And I just wanna share like the five best piece of it, pieces of advice that I've ever gotten. Things that, first of all, that I just know to be true, right? Um, and then oh, I thought it would be really fun too for you guys to share the best piece of advice that y'all have ever gotten. As far as like success in your business, I'd love for you to drop those below. Um, okay, so let me share this out. I'd love for you guys to do the same thing. I'm sharing this into a couple of groups. If you are a female entrepreneur, I would love to also invite you into the Heart to Heart Tribe. Um, this is a special Facebook group that my girlfriend and I, Elise Leininger, we run together, the Heart to Heart Tribe. Um, you can actually go to hearttoharttribe.com. It's a Facebook group just for women entrepreneurs, all companies, all businesses, all walks of life, all backgrounds you can join that Facebook group and there's lots of great stuff in there um, but I'm actually sharing it in there right now too so if you happen to share it just type shared below so I can give you a shout out that would be super fun and uh, okay let's get this going so I've got I've got notes here so I don't go all scatterbrained on you guys so the five best pieces of advice that I've ever received um, and this is something that these have helped me in multiple businesses. So in network marketing, traditional businesses, I feel like these five things you'll be able to take to the bank, literally. Um, but I think it could also apply to a lot of other things. Y'all know I like to talk about business. I also like to talk about relationships, um, marriage especially, but friendships. These five things will really help you a lot. So let's move along, shall we? So the number one big thing that I think was given to me as advice Probably right when I first started, I wanna say, um, y'all know that my very first venture in direct sales, I sold for Pampered Chef, I did home parties. Um, and back then, we had social media as far as like message boards and stuff. We had uh, ICQ, do y'all remember that? Like chat, we had uh, AOL Instant Messenger, we had that, I'm talking about old school. Um, and I remember going to meetings sometimes, like we were building that business locally, right? We didn't build, like Facebook Live wasn't a thing, we didn't have Facebook groups and that sort of stuff, how I build my business now. So we built a lot of our business face-to-face, belly-to-belly, um, person-to-person, really, like in, and we had meetings, like actual meetings in people's living rooms. <clears throat> and I remember one of the very best piece of it, pieces of advice that somebody gave me was, you know, when, because in, in Pampered Chef especially, we got to see people do their presentations just like this. I mean, you may watch me on a, on a, like a Facebook Live, right? One of the best pieces of advice that I got was don't duplicate. Now I know that some y'all are gonna be like, oh, she said don't duplicate. Don't duplicate meaning 
don't try to imitate what someone else is doing. So like in terms of like when we were doing presentations and stuff, a lot of us would try and scribble down notes like word for word, like scripts, right? Like if you have in your business, you have scripts to use. One of the best piece of, pieces of advice that I got was to don't duplicate, don't use those scripts, stop it. <laughs> because people who know you know those are not your words. That's not your heart. So when you watch someone else's presentation, whether it's on a Facebook Live or um, belly to belly, you're at a meeting or something, don't try to duplicate what they're doing. Instead, the best advice was to don't imitate, emulate. So the difference between the two is like, don't just do what that person is doing. Try to think how that person is thinking. Right? If this is making sense, share this out. If you do share, let me know that below so I can give you a shout out. I love it when you guys, you know, a lot of you guys have people who follow you on Facebook who are in business. They really want success tips and they find it really valuable when you share things that helps them too. And I like seeing those win-wins. So share this out into groups or on your page if, if you connect with people who like um, this sort of tip. Um, so the, the, the don't imitate, emulate. But the difference is what it's not like a monkey see, monkey do. You don't just want to do what someone else is doing. You want to learn what people are learning. Think how they're thinking and think to yourself, why are they doing it the way they're doing that, right? So instead of, this is a great example. So thank you, Mindy Goodman, for sharing. Um, so this is a great example, right? So this Facebook Live, okay? If you look at this Facebook Live, you may like scribble down notes of everything that I'm saying, the five tips I'm about to give you, the five pieces of advice, right? And you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna write down those five tips and I'm gonna regurgitate exactly what she was saying. This is the Facebook Live, people like her lives, they share her lives, I'm gonna do this exact live. Hold on, before you do that, what I do want you to know is that instead of imitating, emulate it. So look at how I wrote the headline up above, right? Think of it like a magazine article, right? Like when you pick up a magazine on a newsstand, people love to read like the five best ways to blah, blah, blah. The number one thing to avoid is blah, blah, blah. People love seeing like, okay, what are five things I can grab from this chick's video and then move about my life, right? So that is a tip that you can emulate. So anything in your own business, you could totally just recreate that and, and do that. Like, so you could do, of course, the five best tips that you've learned or the five best pieces of advice that you've gotten, but obviously they're gonna be different than mine, right? So the best tip that I got, number one, was be yourself. Don't duplicate, and I know y'all are like, Ugh, but um, don't imitate, emulate, okay? Don't do what people do. Think how people think. Learn how they're learning, and then do, figure it out, like why are they going live more than posting? Why is she putting numbers, like the top five ways to blah, 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 in her headline? Because success leaves clues, those things work, okay? Number two, identify your big goal. Now, we all talk about goals, in, in my circle anyway, network marketing, on our team, we talk about goals. We talk about big, hairy, audacious goals. Have you ever heard of that? BHAG, thank you for sharing. Mary Menard Arsborn, love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so identifying your big goals, one of the coolest things that I heard a few weeks ago was when you identify your big goal, okay? So like my husband, a lot of y'all know, he is a former Marine, he is a disabled veteran. Um, and our big goal is to be able to support disabled and homeless veterans here in the United States in a really big way, okay? That's our big, hairy, audacious goal. That is a huge goal for us. Um, so when you set a big goal and have it in your mind, set a goal so big that you start remembering if you don't win, who loses? That, that hit me like a ton of bricks when I heard that. Um, because it's really easy, especially as an entrepreneur, especially in network marketing, if you've got your own business, it's really easy to say, you know, I don't need the money that bad. I mean, I don't need, do I really need a trip that bad? Do I really need a new car that bad? Well, maybe not. So it's really easy for us to scale it back and say like, I'll just, I'll just delay it. It's not that big of a deal. It's just me. It's just my family. It's like no big thing. When you set really huge goals, start thinking who loses if you don't win. 
So for me, I know I'm working extra hard because I have really big goals. It's really important to my husband and I, we really want to give big to veterans, to disabled veterans especially, because that's, that's a part of us. That's my husband's category, <laughs> okay? So that is a big thing for us. So identify your big goal. That was number two, is remember who wins when you win. Who loses if you don't win? So stop putting off your big goal. Stop putting off the thing that you want to do because every day that you put this off, the person or the thing or the foundation or the group of kids or the disabled vets or whatever it is that you're, whoever you're wanting to serve, whoever you're wanting to work for and lift up, do they lose when you don't win? Think about that. Maybe that'll help you keep it going, right? Number three um, is don't overthink it. Okay, can I get like an amen from my fellow recovering uh, perfectionists? <laughs> Y'all, here's the thing. This is another thing that is going to like, this is going to sink in for you guys because it, it did for me like, whoa, like big time. Perfectionism is a nice way of saying procrastinating. When you say, I'm just a perfectionist, I don't want to do this because I want it to be perfect. Did y'all know? Consider this. That's just another way of you procrastinating. Is that not like... Ugh. Because for me, like I'm super type A and I've kind of owned that. I've owned it in my life. Like if, if y'all have two, let me know. A lot of us who are type A, a lot of us who are perfectionists, we kind of own that. Like it's a part of our personality. We can definitely identify with it and we own it almost like in a, almost in a way of like, oh yeah, I'm a perfectionist. Oh yeah, I'm super type A. I know I do. Y'all. You have to realize that when you say that, when you are saying, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm not good at it yet. I don't want to put it out there because it's not perfect yet. I don't want to prospect that person because I haven't gotten my words down yet. I don't want to host a team call because I don't have a team yet. I don't want to go live because I don't have all this set up yet. Whatever that is, your perfectionism is helping your procrastination. That will not serve you. That goes all the way back to who loses? Who's losing by you not winning? Do you see? Well, I mean, that one, that is probably by far the, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. And I'm still, I'll be honest, that is something I am still working through on the daily, like on the hourly is because that's a real thing. Your brain starts to go, oh, we don't want to put something out there because we might look silly and we might look weird. I don't want to go on social media because I might look like a wreck and I don't have it all together. I don't want to be up on stage because I'm not good at speaking yet. Y'all, like who loses when you don't win, right? The more you procrastinate. So take action fast. Um, my good friend Krista Sutton, she is a business coach, and I remember a few years ago, um, we worked together when I was president of a really large organization, um, a company, and uh, she was such a huge instrument to that company's success. And one of the best things she ever said to me was, you have to be willing to do it ugly before you're going to get to do it good. And that's like grammar, diced and sliced grammar, right? But... Be willing to do it ugly because then the more you do it ugly, the more likely you will be able to have the opportunity to do it well. Do it ugly. Be willing to do it ugly. I told my team this. We have, um, we have team Zoom meetings every Monday night and um, we had a good group on tonight and, and I mentioned to them on this Zoom that if you wait, like we were talking about going live on Facebook, we do like trainings on social media and growing your network marketing business and stuff like that. And, um, so, so good. And tonight we were talking about going live <clears throat> and how many of you guys are procrastinating going live on Facebook? Like we have attracted some awesome people to our team lately by going live on Facebook because people feel like they know you, like you know me, like when you, when I show up on Facebook, like I'm with you at your dining room table or your living room or sitting on a couch next to you or wherever you are right now, like I'm there with you in your car or whatever. And people feel like they know you. And we had a couple people bring up, well, it's, it's really uncomfortable to go live at first, right? Like, it's really awkward. And dude, y'all, like, I get it. I'm, 
I get the butterflies and every time like God tells me like I download something and he's like hey you need to say this and you need to go live and I'm like but I don't want to do that I have like laundry to do I should do dishes I should do anything <laughs> other than feel uncomfortable here's the thing if you don't feel comfortable going live or reaching out to that person or going um, to apologize to someone or whatever, here's the thing. If you wait until it's comfortable, you waited until it was too late. You waited too long. Going live, especially like we're, we're actually going to do, um, Elise and I are going to do a whole training on going Facebook live and we've actually put, we're putting together like a social media boot camp. It is so, it, y'all, it is so good. I don't know if I was supposed to tell you that or not, but here we go. Um, anyway, so one of the things we're going to talk about in our go live training and social media boot camp is how to go live, but the fact that you have to just do it. You have to take action fast and you have to be willing to do it ugly because the more that you do it ugly, the better you'll get. But if you wait until the point where you're like, I've learned it all and now I'm ready, you waited too long. The message has passed. The ship has sailed, as they say, right? So you have to be willing to do it ugly. All right. Number four, best piece of advice that I've ever gotten that has helped me a lot. Uh, I've been successful in multiple different network marketing companies. Um, we all have different levels of success, of course, right? But I've been very successful in multiple different network marketing companies, very successful in traditional businesses as well. And one of the things, this is what I'm, I'm also teaching to our team on our Zooms, is to celebrate your wins, big and small. Here's what I want to share with you guys. Um, you cannot measure yourself with someone else's ruler. On social media, I think that that's a pretty big issue. Um, you see the recognition posts, you see people like, you know, like they've got the ring light, right? Like in front of me, there's this ring light and like it makes the picture look better and you think, oh, you know, that person's got all their crap together, <laughs> right? Or you see them getting their car bonus or you see them earning their trip or, you know, I talked about it a few videos ago. Um, they, they joined your company and two months later, they're at the top of their rank or whatever, right? Here's the thing. You cannot sit there and wallow in your own self-doubt, in your own self-pity, in your own procrastination, aka you think it's perfectionism, but it's not. It's procrastination. You can't do that. You also need to celebrate your smallest wins. And this is something I'm loving doing with our team because as you celebrate even your smallest wins, they're going to have a compound effect. And the more you say it out loud, I'm excited because I showed up on Facebook Live today. Um, I'm excited because I got dressed today. Especially those of y'all like ladies, when you work from home, hello, hoodies, yoga pants, messy bun, no makeup. Am I right? Y'all, if, if your big act today was actually putting on real clothes and like some lip gloss, that who cares if that's a small win? You have to celebrate small wins. If you wanted to work out for 30 minutes, but you only got in 10 minutes, you better be celebrating that. If you wanted to prospect 10 new people, but you only called one, you better be celebrating that. You have to celebrate big and small wins and you have to say them out loud every single day. Write them down or say them out loud. Call a friend, say, I'm super excited because I did this. Because here's the thing, if you really break it down, and this is really, especially, you know, true on social media. It's really easy to look at someone. Um, I shared with our team today and in my current network marketing company, I joined as a promoter 17 days later. Well, here, let's back this up. Two days later, I hit the very first, like the fast start bonus that they have in our company, right? So I earned like $1,300 in bonuses and commissions in two days. We're talking 48 hours. Okay. Nine days later, I hit Another bonus is like a $400 bonus, $399 bonus. 17 days in, we had our car bonus, okay? I Four months in, I was able to retire my husband from his corporate job, making almost six figures. I was able to pull him home, okay? I've earned lots and lots of trips. We have two car bonuses, blah, 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 blah. Now, someone may look at me and think, oh, man, well, how come I'm not doing that? And how come I don't have that much success? And I've been in this business longer than she has. And 
she's got this and she did that and whatever. Y'all, here's what I want you to understand. I look at my sponsor, my sponsor, uh, she hit the top of the company in three months. She has earned over a million dollars in commissions in her first 11 months of the company. She became a millionaire in her first 11 months in this company. Y'all, like there's always someone else that's going to do more in your eyes. Always. But here's what you have to remember. Don't let that stop. Like that's a semicolon. <laughs> that's not a period. That's a semicolon. Because it works both ways. You might think, oh man, so-and-so is doing that and so-and-so is doing that. And you might let it get to you and think, well, I guess, I mean, you know, I'm just not as good as she is. I'm not, I'm not all that like he is. I'm just not. What you have to realize is that you probably have something that you have right now. You've done something in your business. You have something in your life. You have something about your personality, your looks, your setup, your finances, your faith, your relationships, your fitness. You have something that other people are praying for right this very second. For real. You don't know it yet because a lot of times they don't sit there and message you saying, oh man, I wish I had your blah, blah, blah. I wish I was more like you in this way. They probably just internalize it just like you are. Just like you are, they're probably sitting there just like you are thinking, wow, I wish I had such and such. I wish I could have this level of success. I wish I could have done that. They're thinking the exact same thing. So when I say, don't measure yourself on someone else's ruler, what I'm saying is you have to celebrate where you are. Start where you are. Do what you can, right? You have to take it because you have to understand you have something that other people are praying for right now just like someone else has something that you're praying for, right? So you have to celebrate the wins big and small. Number five, and this is the biggest one, that's why I saved the best for last, y'all. Number five is the biggest one. Do it with integrity. Best business advice I've ever gotten. Now, in my 20 years, this is some, this is some juicy stuff for y'all. In my 20 years of business, I have had multiple opportunities to do something outside of integrity. Multiple, multiple conversations, multiple situations, multiple presentations, multiple, hey, you wanna do this? Many. I've witnessed, like in act, like actually just recently, I've actually witnessed someone, people, one in particular, standing up in the front of the room with a mic in her hand, saying something totally outside of integrity in front of like 200 people to build her business. Y'all, Lack of integrity is all around you as an entrepreneur because it is for to each their own, right? There are many opportunities to do it wrong to make more money. Many. There are many easy ways to do things, cut corners, shave a little bit off, scrape this by, whisper something, take advantage of a situation. There are many opportunities to squeeze that lemon. But I will challenge you, one of the biggest and best piece of it, pieces of advice that I've ever gotten that I have really taken to heart is do it with integrity or don't do it. If you are pausing, wondering, does this feel right or is this out of integrity, err on the side of doubt. Don't do it if it's not integrity because here's the thing. The business that you build by squeezing that lemon, by cutting corners, by taking advantage, by not doing it the right way that you know you should, that business is built on sand. It will not last. You may have some success. You may fly like a firework, Pew, really awesome, beautiful lights, sparkly, twinkly, and then guess what? It fizzles out and it becomes nothing and not remembered. It is built on sand. It will not last. It will wash away. I've seen it happen. I've seen people as in network marketing, but, but in multiple different types of businesses, I've seen them come in, they take advantage of situations, they take advantage of people, they do things totally not, y'all, like what we saw a couple months ago was no bueno. But it's one of those things that like, I know that person will probably have some short-term wins because of what they did. I know that. That's just the name of the game. But I also know in the long run, which I'm playing for the long run, I know in the long run, that will bite her in the butt. <laughs> No question. I mean, it's going to backfire. And what happens in business 
is that a lot of times when something comes back around and it backfires because you did something out of alignment, you did something out of integrity, when it backfires, it does not backfire in a small way. It backfires in a massive way that's like compounding interest for real. So number five, the biggest, best piece of advice is do it with integrity or don't do it. If you have to pause, give it some thought of whether it's right or wrong. If it doesn't feel good in your gut, if you wouldn't want to call up someone and brag about the fact that you just did something, don't do it. It will backfire. It will. It'll kill your business. Okay? All right. So here's what I want to leave with you guys. If you found value in this, share this out. I would love to know if you're new to my videos, um, also type new below. I'd love to know if you have found my videos just from somebody else sharing or whatever. Um, we are also, we're launching a social media bootcamp, my friend and I, Elise. Um, we have both built, um, I've built a six figure business, she has built a seven figure business, all on Facebook, all on Instagram and YouTube, just all on social media. We're gonna teach people how to do the same thing. Um, so that's actually in the works. I'm actually not quite sure if I was supposed to share that or not, but that's in the works. Um, so we're gonna be launching that here pretty soon. Um, some of the other things that I wanna share with you guys is that I, I feel like I, I keep saying a couple times and now it's turned into a thing the you've got to also you've got to get out of your head and into your heart a lot of times um, in this business and you've got to check yourself I call it the heart and the hustle right I've said it multiple times and now it's like people are framing me with it um, you have to understand that when you build your business you've got to have both you've got to know how to do your business that takes brains but you've also got to have it in your heart that you want to help other people. You've got either some big, hairy, audacious goal that when you win, they win. If you lose, they lose. Um, that is your heart. If you don't have something big that you're fighting for, bigger than you, bigger than your family. I'm talking like legacy type stuff. Um, that is what will keep you going. That is what will keep you driving when it gets really hard. So the heart and the hustle is really about doing things with integrity, but also doing things smart, working smarter, not necessarily harder, but doing it the right way. There are a lot of freaking shortcuts that people are teaching out there and it's just not right. And it will build a business on sand. It won't build it on stable rock. So that is my encouragement to you guys is just take those five things, take them to heart, put your own spin on it. That's what I would encourage you guys to do is figure out, write it down. What are the five best pieces of advice that people have given to you along the way? What are some things that you do that you can pass on? Here's the cool part about social media. When you put it out there on a video, other people that you don't even know will be inspired by it. You never know whose heart you're reaching. You never know who you're touching. You never know, like, when someone shares this out. I got a message last week from somebody sharing my video. I've never heard of this girl before. The girl who shared it, I've never heard of her. Her friend watched it and sent me a message saying that that video that I did last week about the Chinese bamboo tree, Chinese bamboo tree, um, helped her out of a really, really, really dark place in her life. I thought it was just a biz business video. It wasn't. It wasn't just a business video. That was way more than a business video. You just never know who you're reaching. So get out of your head, get into your heart, start thinking of these things and share them. That's how we teach each other. That's how as a community we can rise, right? So I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my videos. If you like it, share it. I really appreciate it. And so will the people that follow you and um, who watch your Facebook. I know they will. Comment below if you found anything valuable. And also, I'd love to know what are the best pieces of advice you've ever gotten in business and life and whatever. I'd love to know. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye, you guys.